Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 23 in the series and is entitled Dataset, Data Adapter, and Data Binding in ASP.NET 4.5 using C Sharp. Dataset is an alternative to Data Reader, but it is more powerful because it may contain a collection of tables and relationships. It can be manipulated through Data Table, Data Column, and Data Row, and it uses Data Adapter to connect to backend database. For activity number 23, we will create an ASP.NET website with a folder app data and a SQL Server database called Product. Inside that database, we will create a Products table with fields Prod ID and Name. We will add three records. Then we will create a web form with a text prod ID and a drop down list. Then we will fill the drop down list with prod ID. We will also add a list box. The procedure is that when the drop down list is changed, we will search if a record with that prod ID exists and display all the details in the list box. Let's create our website, file new website. We'll call it activity23. We'll create an app data folder and inside it we're going to add a SQL Server database called Product. We'll add a table called Products with Prod ID. It's an identity, so we have to go to its identity specification and its identity should become true. This means that it's going to automatically uh, increment the product ID starting with one. The other field is name and it is bar car 50. We will not allow any nulls. And the name of this table is products. You can now update it and update the database. We can now add records by showing the table data. Notice that we're not going to add anything in the product ID because it's already an identity. So the values here are pen, paper, and bag. Now we can close these tables. This time we will create our web form there. Click add. We'll go to the design and again the trick will drag the products table into our web form. That is to get the connection string and then we'll just delete them for the meantime. Now we can go back or we can go to default ASPX.cs where we are going to declare our three namespaces system uh, that web that configuration system dot data and a system dot data dot SQL client. Okay. Then we can declare our connection string. It's a string. Let's call it con str is equal to web configuration manager dot connection strings uh, dot connection string okay. semicolon now let's go to web config there is our connection string we'll simply copy it and paste it here okay now inside the page load, if you remember, uh, since we want to do this only on the initial loading of the page, we need this. Uh, if not, this is post pack. So we don't have to regularly do this. Okay. So first we will declare our SQL connection. Let's call it con is equal to new SQL connection and our string. 
Well, we're stream coin str. Okay. Now our command, SQL command, let's call it cmd is equal to new SQL command. We're going to simply uh, select all the fields and rows in our table products. Don't forget the connection. Okay. Next is we're going to declare our SQL data adapter. SQL data adapter, let's call it ADP is equal to new SQL data adapter and the command. And finally, we're going to create our data set. Let's call it DS is equal to new data set okay, so let's try creating now our drop-down list ah we have not yet included our items in our default so we need to do that before we proceed okay Okay, let's go back to our default. We need to uh, add here a label product ID. And beside it, we will place a drop-down list. Okay, it's enable auto pass box. And then below it, we're going to put a list box. Okay, those are our two controls. Now we can go back here. So for catch, we will simply create an alert using JavaScript. Alert that says connection problem which I hope will not happen semicolon and to close our script okay semicolon finally con that close okay now for our try We'll start by opening our connection and we will use the adapter. Uh, we will fill the adapter with our data source or our data set. We have this products. You can name it any way you want, but I guess it's better if you're going to name it also with the name of your table. Okay, then we can use here for each, for each data row, let's call it R, in our data set, we have tables, we only have one table as of now, and that is the products table. So for each row, we're going to put them inside the list box. So let's create a list item variable called i is equal to new list item. <clears throat> right now for our text and value, it will be the same. It will be just the product ID of our products table so prod id can convert it to string and the same thing for our value it will be our prod id This is what we're going to see in our drop-down list, the string. OK. 
Okay, then we can now add our I row to drop down list when that items dot add I. Okay, now it's filled. The next thing we have to do is to create the selection event here. And since the procedure is almost the same, we will just try to copy it from here, from our page load. Okay, here. Control B. Our connection string, our SQL command right now would be uh, dependent on whatever product ID will be selected using the drop down list. So where prod ID is equal to plus whatever in the drop down list when selected value, then we'll close it. Correct, correct. Then we will fill list box when. Okay. List box one that items that clear will clear them first. Then let's add some items inside our list box. Let's start with the product ID that add product ID colon will be equal to the data set. Our tables is products. Well, in hopefully we only have one row. It should be because prod ID is the index, and the first item in the item array would be for the field product ID. So we'll use also zero, and we'll make it to string. We will do the same thing for our name. So I'll just copy. This time it's for the name. So of course only one row, but this time we will ref ref refer to the second field at the name. So that is not name one. Oh, sorry, that's one. Okay, I think we're done. Let's try to look at it in our of web source, select two, select one, select three, correct. Data binding is the process of binding elements of a page to a data in a data store. It can be done at a page level or control level. To continue with our activity, we will cre um, create a grid view above the drop-down list, and we will replace list box with details view and bind into the data set. And then in peeling up uh, drop down list, we will use data bind too. Okay, so let's do it uh, by going to our default. Uh, above the drop down list, we're going to add the uh, um, green view right here from the data toolbox. So green view there. Now we can go back to our code behind and do it in our page load. Okay, before that, uh, I'll show you another power of a uh, data set that you cannot do with um, data reader. Even if it's close, even if we have already closed our connection, because um, the data already resides in our data set, we can do the manipulation uh, after we close the connection. I'll show you control F five. Now I move this uh, for each the filling out or filling up of uh, drop down list uh, after we have used try catch finally. And if you run it, it will still work. Okay. Okay. So how about data binding? We can do it also outside after the connection has been closed, and it's easy as, as setting up our grid view there that data source data source is equal to our data set and uh, the magic command is that we have to bind it grid view one that 
data bind data bind okay there now it's binded to our data source such that if we look at our browser now you will see the complete table there in our grid view and of course this one's still working this is the power of data binding uh, another thing is that we're going to replace this list view with um, the details view okay so let's drag it here let's go back to our code behind so this time we're going to delete all this list box i can simply comment it for you and then our details view the same our details view one uh, dot data source is equal to our data set and our magic command this data bind okay so if you look at it in the browser to there is our details view the next thing we have to do is to make this drop down list also uh, declared using data bind so how to do that of course it's here also here okay so this for each we are going to delete or we're simply going to comment for now then we will use data bind how it's different because it's only one field so the others uh, grid view and details view it took all the all the fields from our table uh, products but this time it's only one field so to do that, first, again, we have to set the data source is equal to our data set, DS. And then we have to set what is our data value field, data value field. Of course, uh, we wanted product ID. For the sake of example only, let's say that uh, we want our uh, data text field, data text field there, to be equal to the name. Okay, and then after that we have to bind it. Dot data bind. Let's look at the result. The data text field is name. So you can see that what appears here is the uh, field uh, name, right? Paper, pen, and bug. This is good because we still were able to maintain our data value field to product ID. Of course, if you want to see the product ID instead of the name, you can simply change this with product ID. Well, uh, congratulations, we just finished discussing data, by, um, <clears throat> data binding, data adapter, and data set in ASP.NET 4.5. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. Masalama.